So this is just going to be a quick work in progress video. I don't have something working to show you, but I do have some steps forward. So if you've watched any of the previous videos, you know I've said a couple of times that the biggest task is going to be, or the biggest next task is going to be to put it onto a much more solid foundation than this Solaris breadboard. And I have finally made a start on that. So that's, uh, that's what this is. So I explored various kinds of um, ways to build it and I decided to do this with um, wire wrapping. So wire wrapping is a technique you don't see so often anymore now that um, printed circuit boards have gotten so cheap to make. Um, but the basic idea with wire wrapping is that you have these sockets with um, long square pins and then you wrap some, uh, the, use a special tool to wrap thin wires around, um, uh, around the pins. You can see one, uh, one, one done here. Um, and so it's an interesting technique because it makes very solid connections. Those connections are not simply um, mechanical, but they are actually cold welds. Um, the pins are square and the, they bite into the, um, um, the, the wires that wrap around them. And so they make a very solid connection. It's an airtight connection, and that means it's going to last a very long time. Um, the other thing is that when you have all those wires going back and forth, it actually looks pretty cool. Um, which I must admit is part of what I've done. So here's the basic layout I'm planning. Um, so uh, I'm going to have two 6522s here. So I had one in the previous board. Um, I'm going to have two here. The top one is going to be for um, the SD card interface and maybe a keyboard. And the bottom one will be sort of general programmable, um, programmable I.O. Um, then this is going to be the processor. Um, this is the clock crystal for the processor. Um, this is address decoding. I'll say more about that in a second. Um, this is just for some resistors and discrete components. And then we have um, ROM over here. I've tried to put this out of the way so it doesn't interfere with things if I, um, if I move ROMs in and out. Uh, RAM, the 6551 for, uh, for the serial port. Um, and so then we'll have a header along the bottom for the serial port, a header over here for the um, SD card. I want to also leave me some space up here. I want to try and put a header on to see if, um, if I can manage to make a video card with the TMS 9918A, but that's another project. And then we'll have something else over here for the, uh, for the IO pins. So I said that this is going to be my um, address decoding logic. Um, on this previous board, um, address decoding was just done with a couple of uh, 7.4 um, series logic gates chips there. Um, and I've decided for this board, the new board, I'm going to do that instead with, uh, um, with programmable logic. And in particular, um, you can see one on this board. I've got, a, um, is it an Atmel? 16v8 generic array logic chip and so you can program that to emulate and actually to implement um, lots of different kinds of gates and so I can compress my address decoding down into a single chip but that chip will actually give me a much tighter decoding than I was getting before um, so I'll have more of the address space available available to me and so that's um that's still sort of coming up but right now, what I've done with this board is I've started the wiring. Um, so the power lines run down the middle um, and I'm just soldering the power buses just to make sure I've, so, I, so I can use more solid connections. So the power lines run down the middle and then um, the plus and minus lines run up and down to each chip. I'm trying to do it that way to, in the hope of reducing inductive loops, um, just to let sure that the loops are smaller, but um, who knows if that'll, if that'll work. Hopefully it will. Um, and then after that, most of the logic is going to get tied together not using um, soldering, but using um, wire wrap. So I thought I would show you the very first line of the address bus uh, or the data bus going in here so you can see roughly what that, what that looks like. Let me just move the camera a little bit so that um, hopefully you'll be able to see a little better. Um, so I am I'm using this gun. Uh, so this uh, um, takes the wires and then applies them uh, tightly. Um, Here's the first, here's the first of these thin wires I'm going to use. So the single most complicated part about, um, about wire wrapping, at least for somebody with 50-year-old um, eyesight like me, is getting the 
wire into the hole on here. So there's two holes. There's a small hole that holds the um, wire and a thicker hole that goes onto the post. So let's see, I'm gonna do the data lines and um, one of the complications is you have to like do everything backwards because we're doing it from underneath. So I have to be super careful about counting my pins, but I happen to remember that I need to go from this pin here. So let's just go down, make sure we're all lined up. That looks good. And then if I, when I pull the trigger, it will um, twist the wire and that twists it on. We should get a couple of turns of, um, uh, of, uh, of insulated cable before we then get the actual, um, the, the non-insulated. Let's just try it. Now I've got it. This is even more hard than doing it the first time is to uh, get this back in so that I can do the other end. There we go. And that one, if I can get this right, that one is going on to here. The nice thing about wiring up and starting by wiring up the ROM and the RAM and they just use the same pinout. So uh, I need to see this from a different angle. Hmm, did I do that wrong? No. There we go. Cool. So there we have, um, that's the first little blue wire there. That is the first of our data bus lines. Um, and, uh, and so two connections down, several hundreds to go.